Wiener Linien, Experiences in Resource Efficiency and Circular Economy. Wiener Linien is one of the most important public transport providers in Vienna, providing tramway, subway, and bus line services. Circular management and resource efficiency are part of its core concerns. Not only did Wiener Linien host the ERIC workshop in Vienna, but also presented some of a few cases of its own success stories, thus displaying evidence of how even big companies invest in the introduction of multi-million euro resource efficiency measures, as described by Christine Bauer-Vasco in the following presentation. This presentation will first present Wiener Linien and company policy in regard to resource efficiency and circular management. The second half of this presentation will focus on case examples of Wiener Linien applying its circular philosophy. As was mentioned before, Wiener Linien is one of the largest transportation companies in Vienna. It operates five subway lines, 20 tramway lines and 98 bus lines and works on guaranteeing ad adequate transportation for about 931 million passengers per year. Concrete instances that best dem demonstrate Wiener Linien's commitment to resource efficiency and circular management are first the renewal of the subway line U4 and the material flow analysis it involved, the close study of the longevity and composition of rail car materials, and finally, the modernization of the Kaunitzgasse traction power substation. The renewal of the U4 subway line is the largest modernization in the history of the Viennese subway system. The city of Vienna and Wiener Linien are investing 335 million euros in improving the U4 line. As part of the comprehensive modernization, signal boxes will be exchanged, tracks and track substructure renewed, and stations renovated. The work started in spring 2014 and will last until 2024. Thanks to the material flow analysis involved in the preliminary stages of the project, it is expected that only 40% of construction material will be primary materials. 43% will be materials from the old subway line, which are either directly reusable or have been recycled and reintegrated in the new line. The last 17%, finally, will be materials recycled from other building sites. Another project focused on the composition of rail car materials. The goal was to make rail cars more resistant to the wearing effect of braking and grinding and to reduce the amount of spare parts and operating materials. Another reason for this project was to look at these rail cars from the occupational medicine's point of view, detailing what kind of paint, glue and whatever else has been used in the rail cars. This is important for potential recycling and the health of the employees. Rail cars both in tramways and subways are mainly made of steel. Other materials include aluminum, copper and plastic. All in all, recyclable materials are expected to account for at least 85% of both tramway and subway cars. Following the analysis of brake line and grinding strip wearing, it was estimated that in one life cycle, overall wearing would total 410 kg for an entire subway rail car and 100 kg for a tram car. The modernization of the Kaunitzgasse substation is, the, is this presentation's third and last example of Wiener Linien's circular projects. A number of factors contributed to the Kaunitzgasse substation's dire need for renovation. Some parts of the station were more than three decades old. A number of cables were in a bad condition. And finally, to top it all off, the location was highly unfavorable. Three alternative scenarios for modernization were contemplated. The station could either undergo full renewal where it stood, have parts relocated to more favorable areas, or be entirely relocated. Due to economic reasons, it was decided to go for alternative C, even though it would not be the most favorable choice with regards to, to a circular management aspect. I thank you for your attention.